In Australia, however, we provide a lot of support through the tax system to encourage uh, people to make provision for their retirement. Our spending through the tax system on encouraging people's private pensions is the highest in the OECD. Um, uh, whereas, um, and our other, but our other tax expenditures are pretty low compared to other countries. So say for example in uh, France and in the United States and Germany, a lot of support for families with children is provided through the tax system rather than through the spending system. Whereas in Australia, most of our support for families is provided as spending. Um, uh, whereas uh, New Zealand has very low tax expenditures. Um, in contrast. So, so, so while the benefit systems look a bit similar, the way we support people through the tax system is very different. Uh, and also Australia has very high levels of mandatory private social benefits. So we've got compulsory superannuation, privately uh, organised, and we've also, most people get their sick pay through uh, conditions of employment rather than through um, government spending. So. You know, sort of, I think the most recent figures I've seen is that uh, sickness benefit in Australia is about spending about 0.2% of GDP. I think that's probably an exaggeration. Whereas the, what people get from their employers is equivalent to about 2% of GDP um, in terms of sick pay. Now, in some countries that's provided by the government, but in Australia it's provided by employers. Uh, so when you subtract all of these taxes that people pay if they are on benefits and then add in the tax expenditures, and add in the um, uh, private social benefits, uh, countries change ranking quite significantly. So, um, so uh, in fact, net social spending, net total social spending in New Zealand is about just over 16% of GDP, whereas in Australia it's about 19% of GDP. Um, so we switch from being below you to being above you in terms of what we spend overall. Um, and some of the other changes in countries' rankings are spectacular. So uh, Denmark taxes people's benefits very highly, you know, sort of, um, and so its net spending falls by about um, from 27% to 22% of GDP, whereas the US has the most expensive spending on private health care and also has very, uh, does a lot of support through the tax system. So it rises from 16 to 25% of GDP if you look at this total social effort. Uh, now, the, just to get to some pictures, um, when you look at spending on income tested benefits, um, Australia spends more on income tested benefits than any other OECD country. New Zealand comes next in the ranking, but there's quite a significant difference. And the main difference is that our age pension is income tested, whereas uh, your national superannuation isn't. Um, so in terms of targeting, we income test, our two countries income test more than anybody else. Um, and, but then the country, this is in terms of spending, uh, total levels of spending. Um, when you look at the um, distribution of benefits, um, Australia and New Zealand also have the most progressive distribution of benefits in the OECD. This looks at... Um, it says how much money is actually directed to the poorest 20% of the population compared to how much money is directed to the richest 20% of the population. So in Australia, the poorest 20% of the population get benefits that are 12 times as much as the richest 20% of the population. In New Zealand, it's about eight times as much. Um, this includes pensions as well. When you do this just for payments to people of working age in Australia, that ratio rises to about 14 times as much. So I mean, that's, that's absolute money. You know, that's that's um, uh, calculated from the shares going. Whereas to take a topical example, at the other extreme in a country like Greece, for example, um, the poorest 20% of the population get half as much in benefits as the richest 20% of the population. So that actually still redistributes income to poor people because um, their, income, their private incomes are a lot less than half of the richest 20% of the population. Uh, but obviously nowhere near as much as Australia or New Zealand. Um, but you know, clearly Australia is an outlier, but New Zealand um, is pretty close to Australia. Uh, I'll skip over that because that's just another way of measuring the same thing. <laughs> Uh, now, Bob referred to churning. Um, this is the idea that you, 
at a point in time, you simultaneously pay taxes and get benefits back. Uh, this is calculated in over a year, actually, though. You know, so it's sort of, uh, and it's also calculated for households. So if you're a young unemployed person living with your parents, um, that'll be counted as churning. Um, if you have a period of unemployment in a year, that'll be counted as churning. But that's because over, over the year you'll be, be paying some taxes and you'll also be receiving some benefits. Uh, now, despite the concerns, uh, this quite, there's been in the past quite a large debate in Australia, as Bob mentioned, uh, Australia has the second lowest level of churning in the OECD. Um, and New Zealand has the fourth lowest. Um, and um, the only country lower than Australia is Korea, and the reason why that's so low is that um, they don't provide much in the way of benefits, so there's not much, to, <coughs> not much overlap. Um, whereas um, th this is all measured relative to household income, so this all comes from income surveys. Um, so you look at how much taxes and benefits people pay in income surveys. So, um, I mean, another way of looking at this is that um, when you look at the distribution of benefits, Australia has, we're, we're also obsessed with middle class welfare, the idea that you know, middle classes are getting an unnecessary share of the, the, the welfare spending. Uh, we have the lowest level of middle class welfare in the OECD. Um, uh, and New Zealand also would be pretty clo close to, to that level as well. And, but it's probably the fact that we have the lowest level of churning and the lowest level of middle class welfare that people get excited by it because they think we should have none rather than some level. Um, now, quite interestingly, um, and most, the, the OECD country that has the most progressive system of direct taxes is the United States. The United States is the only OECD country which redistributes more through the tax system than through the social security system. Um, I think this is a problem, actually. I think most countries achieve a lot of redistribution by doing somewhat less through the tax system and more through the benefit system. But basically, English-speaking countries um, have very progressive tax systems. Uh, this is, you know, these are direct taxes. These don't count, take account of indirect taxes. Uh, if you took account of indirect taxes, that would reduce the progressivity. But basically, the Nordic countries, which have the less progressive direct tax systems also have very high indirect taxes, you know, sort of 20% um, VATs. Um, so uh, that wouldn't change that conclusion in Nordic countries. Uh, now, j just very briefly, um, I'll move on from this. This, just is, this is actually the direct taxes paid by people receiving benefits. And as I said, Australia is right down at the right-hand side. Uh, New Zealand is in the middle, not as anywhere near as high as in Denmark or Sweden. Uh, on from that. So just to get on to some outcomes. Now when you look at levels of inequality, again this is, this is calculated by the Gini coefficient, so it varies between zero and one. Uh, it would be zero if uh, all households had exactly the same amount of income, um, and it would be one if one household had all of the income. Um, uh, what you find is that Australia is just below the OECD average. Um, New Zealand is considerably further up the rankings, but the difference is it's a, the difference in the Gini coefficient. Australia is about 0.3, New Zealand is about 0.34. So New Zealand is more unequal than Australia, um, but it's certainly not as unequal as uh, countries like Turkey or Mexico. Uh, and at the other extreme, the countries that actually have regressive uh, or the United States. Um, uh, sorry, that's in French because I took it from an OECD presentation I did once. Um, but I think you can recognise Nouvelle Zélande. Um, and um, so the Nordic countries, despite the fact that they have not very progressive tax systems, have the lowest levels of inequality. 